Hey everybody and welcome to another learning statistics with your movie tutorial. This video is going to be about independent samples t tests. Independent samples. So that means I have two groups, only two groups of one independent variable, and I am going to see if they are going to be different from each other. That is, on some dependent variable are these two groups different. And in this particular video, we are going to use Another data set from the lovely folks at Learning Statistics with Jamovi, uh, uh, the textbook, as well as the data files. We're going to be using the Harpo data set. Now, I mentioned in the last video, if you took, took a look at that one, uh, that we are going to be using their data sets for this. So if we go up to the hamburger menu, open, and we have our data library, LSJ hyphen data. Let me scroll down here to Zeppo, Harpo, and Chico. A little Marx joke for you all. So Dr. Zeppo was the uh, one sample t-test, and Harpo here is going to be our um, independent samples t-test. So we're going to explore that. I have that one open already. Here it is. We are using version 2.3.3, released in early April 2022. All right, let's describe the data set as we see here. Okay, so Dr. Harpo, <laughs> Harpo Marx, um, teaches statistics and gave a test, but he had a fun little intervention previous to the test. He had two of his previous students, Anastasia and Bernadette, as you can see here, uh, tutor his students. And he was going to see if Anastasia and Bernadette uh, are good tutors, okay? Or another, uh, another, another way to, to to set that. I guess we we can set up the situation like um, who's the better tutor, Bernadette or Anastasia. So that's what we are going to do in this particular um, in this particular example. Okay. So how we do this is we go up to t tests as we've done. Okay. And we go up to independent samples t test, independent samples t test, and we click on that. Okay. It's going to bring up our module here and our output by default. Students is selected. Okay, and a non-directional hypothesis test is also selected. Okay, so grade, the interesting thing is here is that it's being read as a nominal variable. This is one thing that I think Jamovi shouldn't do is that it shouldn't treat all integers as nominal variables. It's very annoying um, because it means we have to constantly change them if we open them into Jamovi. And saving the CSV, making modifications in the CSV isn't going to make those necessarily make those changes in your movie. Of course, if you save this as an OMV file after you make the changes, then yeah, that would work. But then you have a CSV and an OMV. Ah, OMV saves the output too. So maybe that is the case. I should make a video about saving OMV files. Anyways, <laughs> so grade here is going to be acceptable for the dependent variable, even though it says, hey, give me continuous variables. Grade is technically a continuous variable, even though it is marked with integers. Now, tutor is a text nominal variable. We have two groups. Uh, uh, as Anastasia and Bernadette. Now, Bernadette and Anastasia are spelt the same in each of the columns. I mentioned in a previous video that you can use text nominal variables with the A here as opposed to a just a, a blue circle part of the Venn diagram. Uh, you can use it where it asks for nominal variables as long as there are no differences between how those variables are how those levels of those variables are written. So if they're the exact same, then you have no problems. If there are differences, you misspelled Anastasia one time or Bernadette one time, then uh, Jamovi will be like, there are more than two levels here. I cannot do this. Um, and so you got to make sure that your data is set up properly. A good way to do this is to make sure that it is dummy coded in a known way. You know, you've set up your code book and that kind of thing. But for the purposes of this video, we can just bring tutor over the grouping variable. Now, this grouping variable box has a specific charge. It says, I am looking for two variations of this variable and only two variations of this variable. And if so, if it finds more than two, you'll have a red uh, error message where this uh, where this little carrot is, side carrot. Uh, it'll say um, more than two groups or some sort of, it'll be nice, big and red. You'll have no output here. You'll know something is up with your variable in that case. Okay, so first and foremost, we have uh, tutor as our grouping variable, Anastasia versus Bernadette, and our grade as the dependent variable, okay? And so we get our output of students T created by Fisher, of course, uh, and we have this output, okay? Before we jump into the explanation of the output, let's grab all of the things that we want. Now, if we violate our uh, assumption checks here, both the homogeneity of variance, which is Levine's test, or the normality test, which is the Shapiro-Wilk, Okay, we will have to uh, either use Welch's t-test, which is an adjustment to the degrees of freedom. I'll pop that up there and you can see that it is an adjustment here to the amount of degrees of freedom that we have. I'm going to uncheck that now. Um, if we violated an assumption like uh, normality, we might have to use the man with u test, which does not use degrees of freedom. U is a different statistic from t, as you can see. It's quite a bit different. P-value is generally, um, as you saw there, was generally the same. I, that's not always the case, but in this case it is. So those are two options, uh, non-parametric tests that um, could help us if we violate these assumption checks. Well, we didn't. We did not. Okay. 
Uh, Shapiro Wilk, pretty close to one here. So our p-value is also pretty close to one. And then Levine's test is technically an ANOVA, looking at variance. And so we get an F, uh, uh, an F test here. So F is point, uh, 2.49, and that is a P of 1.25. So we're pretty good on not violating either of these things. Next is our hypotheses. So if we had a directional hypothesis, that is to say that um, Anastasia is better, will be will have higher scores than Bernadette, or Bernadette will have higher scores than Anastasia. That's how you would read those two. This will change the test from a two-tailed test to a one-tailed test. We don't know if Anastasia or Bernadette are going to be better or not, so we are going to keep it as a non-directional two-tailed test. Additional statistics, why not grab the mean difference between the two, okay? Grab our confidence interval. We also get a uh, standard error of the difference. You can grab our effect size. It's just making the table wider, so be aware of that depending on your screen size. There's not a big big deal with this one. It's a 27-inch monitor at 1080p, so it's just like all of the room. Uh, and then we can get our effect size and our confidence interval for that effect size. Ooh, effect size. Mm, it's a little shaky. That's probably because we only have, uh, oh, let's see, what, what is our N? Um, 33? Yeah. 15 versus 18. That's another thing to look out for too, is if you have unequal groups, you may uh, ultimately end up violating homogeneity of variance. So that's something to uh, look out for. These aren't too wildly, wildly different from each other um, in a group, of, in a two group, only an N of 33. This is a bit, it's still a bit shaky as far as like the groups themselves uh, hitting the central limit theorem. But overall, the DV of grade is fairly robust at 33 to the central limit theorem. Okay, so. We grab our uh, descriptive plots last, okay? Uh, I really wish it didn't put the median on there, but that's all right. Um, the only thing that we can't do with this descriptive plots is change the uh, bars here. This is confidence intervals. I would much, uh, I would much rather have uh, standard error bars there, but that's all right. It's just telling us that the uh, these are our confidence intervals. But of course, we have a truncated range on the the y-axis here, so it's it, this plot really doesn't tell us too much that we would need to know in that we would need to know um, for Excel. We would have to plot what we see here in Excel. We have to plot this 74.5 versus the 69.1 and then plot these error bars here, okay? So that's what we do uh, in this case. All right, so let's go back up to the statistics now that we've got everything here, okay? So our T is 2.12 and our P is 0.043. So it's under, it's under, it's less than our alpha of 0.05, okay? And a fairly large effect of 0.74, although that uh, with a, only a sample of 33, it's kind of hard to say whether or not that effect size would hold if we got more people tutored by Anastasia or Bernadette. If we go down here to the means, we can see that it looks as though, and this t-test is telling us though, uh, that Anastasia was a slightly better, slightly better, by about five percentage points, better tutor than Bernadette was collectively. Now, this is a very slippery slope. You don't want to bring this up to uh, Anastasia and Bernadette and be like, mm, Bernadette, you really aren't cutting it. You'd want to test and retest with different samples over and over. Whether or not you could keep Anastasia and Bernadette as tutors remains to be seen. But don't go too crazy with this result because it is, while it is a big effect size right now, I wouldn't hurt people <laughs> with saying, hey, don't go to Bernadette. She's not a good tutor. Go to Anastasia. That's not really what we're trying to say here. But there is a difference and there is a significant difference between the two tutors. Anastasia's students scored higher on average on this statistics test than those who were tutored by Bernadette on average. And that's how you do an independent samples t-test in Jamovi using learning statistics with Jamovi. If you have any comments, suggestions, and feedback, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching. Toodles.